Hello and welcome to yet another Outward Lawyer Experience! Well, there you have it. Three videos, three tutorials in just one day. I am on fire! Anyways, the previous video was about server events. This video and in this tutorial, we'll be talking about commands and how to create them and how to like make use of them. So let's begin. First of all, first and foremost thing, this is 2020, alright? So any game mod that you can think of for any game has to be modular. So first thing, we're going to make a command and for that command we are going to put it in a folder. So right click on your uh, project and then add and then new folder. Name the new folder as commands. Inside commands, add a new class. In this class, let's say I want to keep only player related commands. So inside the commands folder, I'm going to make a class known as player, I'll just name it as player commands.cs and add. And there we go. Now we have a class called player commands. So first thing we are going to import gta network api then we are going to inherit the class with script because that is what the gta network api uses as a base class for script now for server events the attribute was in a square bracket you're supposed to write server event for commands it's almost the same let me show it to you you give a square back bracket open close and then inside the bracket you're going to write command and then a normal bracket open and close and inside that bracket we're going to give the command name like backslash the command so let's say if i wanted to make a role-playing game mod i will obviously need a command slash me which is which implies that it is an action command so i'll just give double quotes open and close and inside the quotes i'll put me that means if I were to go in game and do me looks around the area, this is the command that will work with this attribute. So with the command in place, the command name in place, now I will give a usage description. For instance, let's say, first let me write it and then I'll tell you what the usage description is. Now, I want to make it colorful so that whenever I give some sort of a wrong parameter to the co command, I need a hint to be shown. So I'll give this. This means that whatever comes after this is going to be orange in color. So, orange, and then it will show usage, and then whatever I want after this, I'm going to put a W which means white and I'll do me action this means that if I only do slash me and I don't give any other parameters for the command it's not gonna work it's gonna show me the usage via this now one more thing that you're gonna need is greedy args that needs to be true if greedy args is false then if there is a space, for instance, let's say, let me give a comment. If I do this, me looks around the area, then if greedy arguments was supposedly, let's say, false, then only the command and then just the next word would be taken. After the spaces, nothing else would be taken. If you want that after the command, everything is taken as a parameter for the function, then greedy arg has to be true now this is the attribute the command is me i have given the usage the command the usage and the greedy args now after the attribute as usual there needs to be a function which will be triggered whenever we use the command slash me so let's make a function so public void cmd me now this identifier for the function cmd me could be anything it's not necessary that 
I have written CMD underscore me and you also have to write that not necessary you can write whatever this is just a convention that I myself tend to use so I'll go with this now what are the parameters that I need to pass for this function the first thing that I want is that the player the player argument has to be there so the data type player and the identifier as in where the object is going to get stored will be another player but with a small p so this is the data type with the capital P player is the data type the small p, p player is the identifier or the variable where the object is stored now player is stored that is number one parameter the number two parameter is going to be the text that the player is going to pass like slash me fills a water a glass of water so there needs to be a text so the next parameter the data type will be of string and I'll make the identifier name as action now the next part that we're going to do is that let's say if a player does a command like this uh, me space 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 whatever and then space 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 there is this many redundant characters getting used we don't need these so we are going to trim it so action is equals to action dot trim what trim does is basically it removes all the spaces from the start and from the end so now I have action with just the content that is needed the next part is the action should be only visible to a certain proximity of the player let's say only 30 meter that's it so we're going to get a list a list of players which is around the player who is using the command so let me write a list and the generic type which will be inside the list is going to be player the player data type and the let's say the identifier for this list is I'll just write it as nearby players is equals to player dot okay no player okay so this is the list this is the identifier we need all of the players within a certain radius so any pi dot player dot get players in radius of player if you hover your mouse over the function you'll be able to see what parameters it needs so one is radius how far we need to fetch the players from and the player from which relative to which player do we need all of the players so let's say I only want the players within 20 within the range of 20 so I'll put 20 and the player with which with which relative all the players will be fetched which is the player who's using the command so I'll just pass player this player is the parameter passed by the command function over here so now nearby players is a list which contains all of the players within the range of the player who's using the command now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the message to each and every player which is inside nearby players so we are going to use for each for each now the data type obviously player and then I'll just name the variable as item in where like from where are we trying to iterate from the list which list in this case the list is nearby nearby players so nearby players now that we have this all we have to do is just send the message so item dot send chat message and then we are going to format it so the name of the player player dot name first let me give a start this implies that it is an action and then the action now 
if we just leave it like this, it's going to show in just a white color. And actions are not denoted with white color. It's generally denoted with a purple color. So I'll just do this. This means that whatever comes after this is going to be purple in color. Now, this is done. This is one of the commands, me. Let's test it out. Let me load the, um, load the game. Give me a second. Now, as you can see, when the console loads, you're going to see all the server events that are there. And also, it's written, loading commands, found one commands, and loaded one commands. This is the command that we just created, which is me. And it says, says over here that the command has successfully been loaded. Now, we're just going to run the game in our local host. And wait for it. I'll unpause it when the game is loaded. Give me a second, alright?